Miss Joy, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a stellar card to share with you for the gift giving season. So I am going to be using the Elfin Around stamp set, which I have already colored previously. And then I'm going to introduce you to an awesome die. It's called the Compass Card Die. So this is a ra rather large die, but it is so easy to put together. And we put all the instructions on the website. And we're also going to put that in the, as an insert inside of the um, packaging so that you will have no questions once you get this home. So this comes with the, what looks like the four bars. And then it comes with what makes the larger flaps and the smaller flaps. And they are nesting. So what you're seeing here are you're going to need two, you're technically going to need four, but I'm using two pattern papers. So I'm telling you that you need two of those. And then I also cut out the larger flaps in red. Now this rectangular paper comes scored with this die. And so I am bending those like mountains to form a square. And I am reinforcing that with my bone folder. You could, of course, use your uh, soda pot press or stamp press, anything just to get those cores down. On the small little flap, I'm using my Barely Art Glue, and I'm just putting, you know, a moderate amount on there. And then I'm going to fold one of the larger flaps so then it's going to make a box or a square. Once you hold that in place for a second, I do take the bone folder or the soda pot press to reinforce those. Now I am working on the larger flaps. So the red is the largest part, then the nesting section is the printed, and I chose two different plaids for this. And I'm just making sure to center those onto the flaps, and I do that four times. Again, I used two different um, plaids, so you just wanna be aware of that. Now if you use like a printed paper, you need to be very aware of what the top and bottom is, like if there's writing. That's why I chose a, a plaid, but again, use whatever makes you happy. I'm a very traditional Christmas kind of girl. And every time I put down my glue, even though Barely Art is so good and usually doesn't warp, I still reinforce my, uh, my layers with a bone folder or my soda pop press so that I get really good adhesion because I like a really sturdy, construction because you're going to see kind of why here in a minute once I finish with the larger flaps then I work on the small ones this isn't rocket science I mean if I can make it you definitely can make it so now we're going to start with we're going back to the box we're taking one layer whichever one you want just the top and you're taking one of your large flaps and you're going to butt up the edge of the flap with the crease. So you barely are touching that crease because you still want it to move. And then you reinforce that. You flip it over and then you use your glue again. And on the left hand side, because now you've got like a double layer of the square because it's now flat. You're going to apply that to the left side. And I always put it on to the square or the, you know, the, the pop-up mechanism because you don't want the glue on your entire flap. <clears throat> Here, this is where I'm showing you that I'm trying to alternate my, my panels because I use two different plants. They're so similar. I don't know that it would have made a difference, but to me it does. I kind of like things to be right. So now I am butting up the edge of my panel to that seam on that box. And then once it has a second to adhere with my soda pop press, I then flip it over and I'm going to repeat this process. So on the left hand side of the white box, I am adding my glue. I'm checking my pattern to make sure that I've got my alternating plaids. And then again, I am putting down the plaid piece and I'm butting up that edge right to the seam but not hanging over because this card what's so cool about this it's an A2 side size excuse me and it lays absolutely flat in your envelope so you can mail it now 
You know me, I like to mention, so I use really heavy cardstock and I use a foam tape. So mine would prob probably need extra postage. But typically anybody that I give this kind of card to, I'm gonna hand deliver it anyway. So I'm finishing up this process with the last flap. And I'm, I didn't speed this up because I wanted you to see exactly how to do it and that you would get the repetitive motion of it. So once you've done it once, you'll never have to, you know, like read the directions again. But of course, those directions will always be on our website. Everything will be in the link or in the description box below. So you can follow those links to the website to get the instructions as needed. So now you saw that I used the red cardstock. I like, like I said, a sturdy card, so I did cut out both flaps. If you're lazy or like to skip steps, you could have just done the smaller flap, like the smaller of the two nesting flaps, and just used your pattern paper. I don't think it would have made a huge difference, but this is the kind of card people are going to play with. It's very interactive. I think you could use it as a photo album, like for grandparents. I think you could even add um, some like strips to the top and you could like hang it as an ornament. So I don't think that this is a card that's going to be thrown in the garbage. So I want to make it as sturdy as possible. So I used all the layers because I'm extra. Here I am stamping the all of the sentiments from Elfin Christmas. And I used Versafine Claire Nocturne. And then I'm embossing those in clear. And now you're seeing me heat set those, which is what embossing is. Now, what I like about the Elfin Christmas one, it's super cute. It's got some um, snarky sentiments, but it's got some really cute sentiments too. And all nine combination of sentiments and images are have a coordinating die. So if you don't know, Pajama Crafter now sells the stamp by itself, or you can buy a stamp and die combo. If there's a coordinating die, you cannot buy a die separately. So at the time of purchase, you will either have to choose a bundle or just the stamp. So then I wanted to make this into a gift card holder because I think it'd be really cool to make this into like four gift cards. So I chose the... Um, like on the larger flap, the one that would cut out the pattern paper. And then I took that down to, I think, an inch and a half. And I then stamped the spreading Christmas cheer with Versamark and embossed that in white. And I thought it would be fun to use gel pen to add stitching. Just, I like the extra things. I just think it gives it a little bit more of a wow factor because I'm not putting an image on this one. Now you can, you can do whatever you want. This is your card. So once I finish up putting the stitching on there, I then take my Barely Art glue and I just put a very fine length as close to the edge as I can. And then I center that onto this last flap. So I'm making a pocket. Now if you wanted to, you could use really fine um, strips of foam to give it more leverage if you wanted to put more than one gift card in there. But I went ahead and put a Costco gift card in there because that's what my kid wants for Christmas. And now I'm just flipping this around. Do you see how cool this is? I mean, this totally could spin if you wanted it to, like if you were to hang it. So I see that you could use um, like photos and make it like a small little scrapbook for Grandma and Grandpa. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you'll give this one a try. See you next time.